Hello, I have an existing sub panel with only three wires. Two insulated and one uninsulated. I understand that it should have four wires. My question is can the uninsulated wire be used as the neutral with a separate wire run to an earth stake as the ground? The distance and location to run a separate wire to the main box would make it almost impossible. Hi, I'm Mike and I'll be assisting you. Please stand by while I review your question. The existing wiring is a code violation and you need to replace the feeder with four wires. There isn't an alternative. This is my first time used JustAsk.com. I cannot see your answer. Any suggestions? Okay, I see it now. Do three wires need to be insulated? Yes. Okay, THX. I also see two bus bars for neutral slash ground and they look to be connected. I cannot tell if they are bonded to the box, but assume that they are. Can I add separate bus bar that is insulated from the box for the neutral and use the existing bus for the ground? A bond between neutral and ground is only in main service panel not sub panels. I understand. My question is about the existing bus bar in the sub. It has two bars that are connected and they appear to be also connected to the box. Would it be correct to add another bus bar and insulate it from the box to be used for the neutral and use the existing bus as the ground since it is already connected to the box? If they are on plastic they aren't bonded. A ground bar in direct Vontacti would need to be added. If there is a green ground screw in one of the bars it should be removed. Typo. Vontacti should be contact. Okay, so I will test for continuity between the existing bus and the box. If there is continuity, then look for the green screw. Correct. Also, is it okay to use a separate earth ground to a grounding rod instead of running it back to the main? Wouldn't this provide a safe path to ground in the event of a short? Two rods six feet apart with a copper conductor to the ground bar is the requirement. Okay, so the grounding rods would provide a safe ground for the sub panel. Two rods six feet apart with a copper conductor to the ground bar is the requirement. The ground wire to the main equipment and the rods provide the safe grounding. Would separate grounding rods provide safe ground for the sub panel? The rods aren't only faults from your equipment they provide a path for stray ground currents from sources other than lightning, bad utility transformer or failure groom a neighbor service. Okay, I understand this. It makes sense. So would earth grounding rods wired to the ground bus on the sub panel be a safe way to provide this protection without running a wire back to the main? You need both. You didn't tell me where the sub panel was located. If within the same structure or attached structure, driven rods aren't required at a sub panel. Are you speaking from a safety perspective or a code perspective? If I understand correctly, the reason for separating the neutral from the ground is that a short between a neutral and power could energize the ground if it is connected to the neutral. It seems that grounding through a separate grounding rod that is not connected in any way to the neutral would provide the same protection. The sub is in the same building. THX. My answers are based on code. Code is for safety. Okay, THX. 
Anytime, you're welcome. I see you gave me a negative rating. Based on our conversation I think you selected the wrong button. Please correct it dot or tell me why it wasn't a satisfactory answer. Mike, several times I felt that I received short answers and did not receive direct answers to the questions that I asked. My primary concern is the safety of the electrical subsystem. Code is secondary to me. In addition, I want to ensure that I understand the reasoning behind things. THX for reaching out. The answers given are specific to your questions. They are short only because they are direct for most people. Making them overdone usually only adds to confusion. I can only give answers based on code and code is the safest way to install all wiring. Hello and welcome to Just Answer. My name is I will be happy to assist you with your electrical question. Please be patient as it takes time to type and provide links. Also note that the website may be sending you a telephone offer. The offer is not originating from me. 1. The National Electrical Code requires that sub-panel feeder circuits be comprised of four conductors. E. 2 hots, 1 neutral and 1 equipment grounding conductor. The 2 hots and 1 neutral must be insulated wires. If installing the feeder circuit in PVC conduit, the equipment ground can be a bare copper or a bare aluminum wire. 2. On any sub-panel, the neutral bus bar must be isolated from the panel metal enclosure. This is accomplished by not installing the main bonding screw or a main bonding jumper strap at the neutral bus bar. The sub-panel will also require a separately installed equipment ground bar to only terminate ground wires. On any sub-panel, neutrals and grounds are never terminated to the same bus bar. Reason being is that this would then allow the ground wires to act as a secondary neutral path. A neutral wire is a current carrying conductor. Neutral and ground are only bonded together at the main service disconnect and never bonded downstream. E. National Electrical Code Requirement Keep in mind that neutral and ground serve two separate and distinct functions. They are not one and the same. 3. If the subpanel is installed at a detached building from the main panel, then the detached building requires two 8-foot ground rods spaced a minimum of 6 feet apart. The copper grounding electrode conductor will terminate to the equipment ground bar in the subpanel. Does that help to answer your questions? If you have any additional questions, just let me know and I'll be glad to answer them for you. Otherwise, don't forget to rate me before you log off. Thanks. Kevin. Kevin, thank you for this detailed information. I understand the reasoning behind separating the neutral and the ground in the subpanel. My questions are these. 1. The existing wire is 3 conductors, 2 insulated, and 1 uninstalled with all 3 encased like Romex. Will running an additional single wire back to the main meet code and will insulated or uninsulated wire be acceptable? Question mark 2. I am concerned about the safety of the current wiring. However, running another wire from the main to the sub will be very difficult because of the construction slash layout of the house. I'm considering running a ground wire from the sub to a ground stake to make the sub safe. This leads to two questions. One, would this meet code? Two, if not, would it provide safety until I can figure out how to get a wire back to the main? Please understand that running a wire to a ground stake would be quite easy. Also, the sub is in a basement living area. Three, 
there is only one bust bar currently for neutral slash ground. I will test for continuity to determine if it is bonded to the box. If it is, then I plan add a second, non-bonded bus as a neural and use the existing as a ground. If it is not bonded, then I will use the existing bus as neutral, and add a bonded bus as ground. Is this correct and can you see anything else I should be concerned about? Safety is my primary and immediate concern, meeting code is secondary to me, but still want to understand it well. Thanks, Pete. One other thought. There is another sub-panel in the garage that is wired properly. Is there any reason why we can't connect the ground bus bar from the basement sub-panel to the ground bus bar in the garage? As I mentioned, the ground bus on the garage sub-panel is isolated from neutral and it would be much easier to run a ground to the garage than it is to the main. Hello Pete. One, was the sub-panel feeder circuit installed recently or many years ago? Two, is the feeder cable an NM Romex cable or a service entrance cable? Look at the exterior sheath of the cable. Is it labeled as NM or SE? Three, a sub-panel located inside the same structure does not require grounding to a ground rod. Ground rods are only required for sub-panels located in a detached building from the main service panel. 4. Code allows a separate equipment grounding conductor to be installed only on a branch circuit where an equipment grounding conductor does not exist. A sub-panel circuit is called a feeder circuit and is not a branch circuit. Therefore, a separate equipment grounding conductor is not permitted by code. 5. If the neutral bus bar is bonded to the panel, there will either be a green main bonding screw or a main bonding jumper strap located at the neutral bus bar. 6. The equipment grounding conductor for a feeder circuit must originate from the main service panel and not from a downstream subpanel. Kevin, 1. The sub was in the house when we bought it too. I cannot read the shell of the cable. It is quite heavy gauge, maybe 4 or 6. Wires are aluminum. Appears to be of exterior durability.3. It seems like a bonded ground bus bar connected to a properly grounded earth stake would provide the same safety as running the wire back to the main, even if it doesn't, t meet code. Would you agree with this? If not please explain what I am missing.4, okay, this is interesting. So if it's a two-wire system, a grounding stake can be added to add a ground circuit as long as it is branch of the main question mark 5. I cannot see either a green screw or a bonding strap. The existing bus bar has two rows, but appear to be one piece of metal. I intend to text for continuity between the bus and the box to determine if it is bonded. Is this a good way to test question mark 6? Okay. Thanks for the replies. 3. There are two different types of grounds used on an electrical system. The first type is called a grounding electrode conductor, GEC. E. A ground rod and the street side of a city cold metal water supply pipe are the two commonly used forms of a jack. Your main panel should already have a jack connection to one or both of these grounds. The jack purpose is to maintain a zero potential between the earth and the electrical equipment. Jacks are also used for lightning protection. These are earth grounds. The neutral wire from the utility transformer is also connected to a grounding electrode. A jack is only installed at a main panel or at a panel in a detached building. A jack is never installed at a sub-panel within the same building. The next type of ground is called an equipment ground or an equipment grounding conductor, EGC. You use an equipment grounding conductor, EGC, to ground the non-current carrying metal parts of equipment. 
Its function is to keep your equipment as close as possible to ground potential and provide a safe path for ground fault current to flow. A properly sized EGC protects circuit elements and equipment and ensures the safety of your personnel from electric shock. When two panels are connected via a feeder circuit such as a subpanel, these panels are both considered as equipment and require an EGC to connect to both panels. A subpanel circuit is called a feeder circuit and is not the same as a branch circuit. The addition of adding a separate equipment grounding conductor is only permitted on branch circuits but not on feeder circuits. Therefore, it will end up as a code violation of adding either an earth ground to the in-house subpanel and or adding a separate equipment grounding conductor to the feeder circuit. The other code violation is that all conductors of the same circuit must reside in the same cable or the same raceway. 4. This is explained in question number 3 above. 5. Kill power to the subpanel feeder circuit and test for continuity from the panel metal enclosure directly to the neutral bus bar. Another method to determine is if the bare copper equipment grounds also land on the neutral bus bar. If so, the neutral is bonded to the panel. This was permitted by code up until around the 1996 time frame, but no longer allowed. In other words, the subpanel feeder circuit was permitted to not require the equipment grounding conductor spanning between the main and the subpanel. On your application, the only time a feeder cable is allowed to have an uninsulated neutral conductor is if the cable is service entrance cable, type SE. Botany is, if your feeder cable is not type SE and has an uninsulated neutral wire, that is a code violation. SE cable typically has a gray or a light green color or black color on the exterior sheath. SE cable is allowed on the interior of a building. If the cable was type use, underground service entrance, cable, that type is not allowed on the interior of a building. The only method to determine the exact cable type you have is to locate the labeled markings on the exterior cable sheath. All cables are labeled with the cable type, wire conductor size and mater type, CHU for copper or AL for aluminum. If NM Romex cable was installed as the feeder, that is a direct code violation, since the bare wire on an NM Romes cable is only permitted to be used as the EGC and never allowed to be used as a hot or a neutral conductor. A neutral wire is a current carry conductor. It is no different than a hot wire which is also a current carrying conductor. The neutral wire is the return wire on an AC circuit. I hope that helps to provide some additional information on your sub-panel application. Reply back with any questions. Thanks. Kevin. Kevin, thank you for your details response. I appreciate it. This box was surely installed before 1996. That explains why it is wired the way it is. That said, I would feel much better to have a basement sub with ground and neutral separated. I will try to find access to the feeder wire in another location so I can see what type of wire it is. Thank you again for your help. No problem. Glad to assist. Take care, have a great weekend and a happy 2019 New Year's. Thanks. Kevin. Kevin, thank you for your help. I appreciate the detail you have provided. I think I have found a way to run a separate ground to the main. If you have a home improvement or appliance question and want to chat with an expert now visit justanswer.com slash YTHI.